How's it going, everybody? Hope you're going to have an amazing Tuesday. Anyway, last week we took a look at 13 reasons why absence destroy real apps, and boy, oh boy, the butthurt comments were not in short supply. Like this one. Absence will never be the same as a real app! Just like to say, Bess Ross, thank you so much for getting to the point quickly. Thankfully, most of the comments weren't like this whiny suckle. Here's the thing. I mentioned at the end of that video that I'm going to do a video on 13 reasons why real amps are better than absence. Maybe you should try watching the video before you decide to leave your very special and highly intelligent comment. Maybe. That is if having an attention span longer than a goldfish isn't out of the fucking question. But enough about the knuckle draggers and their incredible observations. Let's take a look at 13 reasons why real apps are better than Sims. Number one, they just plain sound better. Let the butt hurt commence. Yes, without a doubt, real amps are still the best choice if you want a great guitar sound, especially if you want to create your own sound. More on that later, but many of the morons are already typing angry comments right now because they have no patience. Now, last week I mentioned that amp sims are getting better and better, and sure, some of them are starting to get pretty damn good, but it's important to stop and realize just what's going on. Think about it. Amp sims are just that. SIMULATIONS! They're trying to be the real thing. Dozens of amp sims come with a pretty faceplate that might look like a Marshall or a Rev or a Mesa, maybe even one of these one day. But the truth is that most of them don't even sound close to the real thing, especially with everything that actually goes into creating a guitar tone. Number two, choice paralysis. So what is choice paralysis? Well, well, there's so many choices out there on the market, it can get really easy to second guess yourself about actually buying something. Just think of how many amp sims are out there and how many more are coming out every single day. In this case, having too many choices might not be such a good thing. Sure, there's also many guitar amps out there, but most of us can't afford to own several thousand of them at the same time. And finding out what's good can be a lot easier, especially if you know what to look for. And if you don't, head on over to the SMG Discord and ask around. There's a ton of knowledgeable folks there who will be more than happy to give you a recommendation. Number three, unit variation. Another thing about recording a real amp entails is unit variation. You see, no two microphones, speakers, or even amps are going to sound exactly the same. These things exist in the real world. They're not software that can be replicated perfectly. Now, they do have similar characteristics, but you are going to be hard pressed to find some that are a 100% match. That's why microphone companies offer matched pair microphones. So why is unit variation good? because it's going to give you your own sound and your own approach. This is why certain studios have their own signature sounds. They might use the same gear, but because of all these different factors, they wind up with somewhat different results. With an amp sim, you're not going to get that. They're all going to sound exactly the same and come with the same mic emulations of the same IR of the same speaker. This leads to too many bands and albums all having the same sound, and that is fucking boring. Seriously, we're at a time when recording tools are more affordable than ever, and yet so many people do the exact same fucking stuff! Ah! Simulated rectifier into a simulated Vintage 30, mic with a simulated SM57. Newsflash, fuckers, it's been done to death for the last 10 years! You're not breaking any new ground here. Try simulating that you have a fucking imagination for once! Number four, latency and dynamic play. Now this is something very few, and I mean very few amp sims are capable of doing right. Just like software compressors, amp sims don't react to incoming signals immediately due to latency. This is the time it takes from your signal to enter your interface and is converted from analog to digital. Then it has to be processed by your drivers and despite all this happening in milliseconds, it's not going to be the same as having that immediate feedback of a live amplifier. Because of this, most amp sims, especially the cheaper and free ones, sound a little bit stale. You don't really get that difference in pick attack, and you most certainly don't get much variation in soft versus hard playing. It's more kind of a take it or leave it type deal. Number five, real amps won't go out of date anytime soon. Real amps are a lot like cars in this case. Sure, they lose some of their initial value as soon as they leave the retailer, but if you take good care of them, you can be damn sure that they're going to last you a very long time. 
Tube amps have been made since the 1930s and they're still desired to this day. Some of the vintage stuff can even go for tens of thousands of dollars. You just don't get that with amp sims. Now be honest here, how many people out there would actually pay that kind of money for the original Line 6 pod? Yeah, right. I actually bought that piece of shit when it came out and I returned it the same day. That's how bad it was. Sure, amp sims have come a very long way since that atrocity and they're still being tweaked and improved, all in an attempt to sound like a real tube amp. And two years from now, stuff that was considered top of the line is probably gonna be thought of as outdated. Introducing the XFX Mark 7. It sounds just like a real amp and we really mean it this time. Tube amps are a tried and tested technology, and even with minimal care, they will function just fine for a long time. That is, if you can manage to not spill beer all over it at your gigs. Number six, even the cheap ones sound great. While expensive tube amps look cool, you most certainly don't need to drop thousands of dollars to get great tones. There are many amazing options out there that won't break the bank, like the Ibanez Tone Blaster 100 head I did a review on a few months back. It's a solid state amp, but it totally rips for metal tones. Hell, I've still got my PV Windsor that I got brand new at a guitar center for a whopping 200 bucks. Even though it's way cheaper than the stuff I've got back here, it's a fantastic sounding amp. And if you're after a slightly more swampy sound than a Marshall, it's a great option. And of course, let's not forget the king of the inexpensive amps, the Joyo Zombie. This little bastard is only $170 and it sounds absolutely fierce. If you do a little bit of research, you can easily find what you're looking for in an inexpensive amp. And if you buy used, you can save hundreds off the sticker price. Do try to stay away from those modeling practice amps though that offer you a thousand different amps all jammed into a little package. Those pieces of shit have no business being in a recording studio and are probably better off in a landfill. Number seven, they look cooler and they're great client bait. Like I mentioned in the last video, guitarists are massive, massive gear nerds and nothing gets a guitarist blood flowing to his nether regions like a wall of expensive tube amps. What's more impressive? Some pixels on a computer or a physical real world item capable of utterly crushing somebody's eardrums. Duh. When clients come into your studio and they see that you have a wall of tube amps, you can bet that they'll start throwing money at you right on the spot. All right, all right, calm down. This actually ties into the next reason. Number eight, they offer something most people don't have. Let's face it, tube amps aren't exactly convenient for the average person. They're big, they're heavy, and they're loud as fuck. Amp sims take all that stuff out of the equation, but like I mentioned before, most of them just don't have their own unique sound. If you're running a recording studio, you're probably going to want to invest in some decent tube amps. That way you'll offer your clients something they can't do at home by themselves. It's just like drum samples. Why the fuck would anybody pay you to just put a drum software library into a MIDI file when they could just as easily do that themselves and not spend money doing it? Let's not beat around the bush. Most people aren't paying for their plugins, so good luck competing with the bastards who pirate everything. Number nine, it tells people you mean business. Now I won't bullshit you guys. Learning how to mic up an amp takes a long damn time. From dialing in the amp itself, to microphone choice, to mic placement, and most importantly, finding the right cabinet. There are a shit ton of factors that you have to consider before you even hit the record button. Learning what works, and more importantly, what doesn't can take years and even decades to master. But why is this a good thing? Well, just about anyone except for the bass players can plug a guitar into an interface, slap on an amp sim, and get some decent results. So why the fuck would anybody pay you to do that in a studio? Well, if you actually put the time into it, you'll learn and eventually master a skill that's more and more lacking these days. I am not making this shit up. I've seen sound guys dangle SM57s between the amp and the cab, pointing at the fucking floor! I guess using a mic stand is a little too much work for these lazy bastards. If you want people to take you seriously, you're gonna have to learn how to mic up a fucking guitar cab. It'll show potential clients that you mean business and they'll rest assured that you'll get them a sound that they can be happy with. 
Number 10, limitless mic options. Yeah, micing amps is difficult, but it's sure as hell a lot of fun. And more importantly, you can get really in depth about creating a great sound. The problem with amp sims is that while they may sound good, you're essentially stuck with the sound of whatever impulse response you're drooling over this week. And sure, some programs like the Two Notes Wall of Sound or the STL Tones Lhasa Lambert Sims allow you quite a bit of tweakability with virtual mic placement, but you're still limited to the microphone and speaker choices that are on those programs. And it's usually going to be the same mic types, FS757s, Neumann condensers, Royers, you name it. It's all going back to the age old problem of sounding too similar. On a real amp, you can grab whatever the hell mics you have available and place them however you please. Now, I was absolutely blown away when I got to try out the Toll G12 on a guitar cab. It sounded fucking amazing, and more importantly, it sounded like nothing else I've tried before. Experimenting with all sorts of different mics is going to allow for far more variation in the sound than you're looking for, and you might just find something that really stands out. Number 11, you won't sound like everybody else. Now, half of you guys are out there probably saying, but God, I really want to sound like my sugar. Why would I not want to sound exactly like theirs? Okay, guys, it's time to stop huffing paint thinner and pay attention. This isn't fucking Star Wars. Nobody likes clones. Look, we practically live in a generation of copycats. Everyone is trying to sound like everybody else and it's making metal fucking lame. You see, bands in the past actually gave a shit about sounding unique. So they looked into all sorts of ways to craft their tone. I've said this many times, but your audience does not give a shit about your tone. But I would like to amend that statement. Your audience might not care about your sound, but if you're all going to use the same one, they'll brush you off like the uninspired imitation that you are. It's bad enough that Facebook groups are an echo chamber. Don't turn an entire music genre into one as well. Number 12, they'll retain their value. Get out your coffee, everybody, because we're about to enter boring time. Some of the liberal arts students might not know this, but there's this thing called supply and demand. What does it mean? Simply put, the more something is in demand, the more companies need to meet it with their supply. However, if it's too much supply for something, but not a lot of demand, that particular item isn't going to be worth all that much. And that's why people don't make money with their music. Let's be very clear here, guys. Nobody's really that excited to hear yet another death metal band with a Rosebush logo. And that's the thing about Ampsums. Their supply is fucking infinite. They're a software program and they can be copied infinitely. A real amp takes an entire factory to assemble, not just a guy sitting at his computer wearing nothing but shit stained boxers. That means when you buy an amp sim, you might have that program forever, but it's also pretty much worthless. On the other hand, if you buy a real amp, it's going to hold some of its value. So if one day you decide that you don't want it anymore, or you have to bail your drummer out of jail because he got arrested for selling meth again, selling your amp won't be that difficult. On the other hand, good fucking luck selling someone your amp sim license. Hell, most companies won't even allow you to resell your license. So in that case, you're pretty much fucked. Number 13 hybrid system. Lastly, let's take a look at one of my favorite ways to record real amps, the hybrid system. This is a great alternative to doing everything softer. Get yourself a real amp and a load box like a Two Notes Captor X and you're good to go. Keeps the noise down and sure as hell keeps the neighbors happy. You can take the cab micing completely out of the equation and let people much smarter than you do the heavy lifting when it comes to mic placement and speaker selection. This way, all of the snobs won't bitch at you. Oh, uh, you're not using a real amp. Because you're using an actual real amp. You'll have the response of a real amp with the convenience of impulse responses. What more could you want? Oh, and just a little hint, if you like working with impulses, you're sure as hell gonna love what's coming out from Spectre Digital early next year. Okay, that doesn't fucking make any sense, okay. Well, expensive, Ugh. Well, expensive tube amps look good. Okay, one more time. Number mine. Number mine? Yeah, number mine. Number nine. <laughs> ah! Wrong button. Oh, fuck, that's not him. Number two, choice paral paralysis. Paralysis, that's it. Number two, choice par paralysis. Yeah, so, what is choice paralysis?